Okay, the first garden I have one radish plant still alive from the original planting. The radish bulb appears squishy, it's getting a little soft now. It's still flowering, it's still obviously producing flowers and it has some seeds on it. So I will harvest this soon in the next day or so. But these trees in this area, this pin oak right above me here has got a double limb starting from a nice big trunk. The branch splits out into two limbs, two main trunks and really filled out in leaves. So after early spring, that tree and then the tree, all the trees of my neighbors that are deciduous, lots of oaks, some pines, but they have a lot of oak trees, all filled in and that made this garden below very, very shadowed, always in shade, in pretty deep shade. So the corn, the 12 plants that I put here as an experiment, my very first try, um, although it did well when it started, has now really shown the effects of the lack of sun. Uh, the plants just quit growing after all those trees filled in their leaves, all their foliage. They stunted the growth. The uh, corn cobs on them um, stayed stunted, never filled out. Um, they just not very good to grow it in the shade. So that, you can see the size of that cob. The whole cob fits in the palm of my hand. And if I pull away some of the covering, you can see we got some corn in there. Got a lot of ants running around and some mold in there by now. I left it on the plant too long, obviously. But um, small, I could have harvested that corn, but um, it's really more work than it's worth. It's an experiment, and we'll learn that this half of the first garden, this front half, once spring is nearly done and all the trees are filled in, gets no sun. There's no sense trying to bear fruit from this region. You can see what happened to the cucumber plants. They've really stop producing cucumbers after the trees filled in. The cucumbers are stunted. I believe this even, yeah, this, this is just all attached to a root. Not even any leaves left on that plant. So the cucumbers have quit in this first garden. I've got new ones planted in the terrace garden to see how they'll do in full sun. Look at this cucumber. It's wilted and shriveled and eaten by bugs. Their immune system is seems to be shut down without sufficient sun. The sunflower, this is the lemon queen, actually is producing still flowers. I cut off the heads, the larger heads on them, and lower down the shaft, they're still producing flowers, and I'll get some seeds out of them, but not very big heads. And this really uh, section of the garden that's cut from sun now, these plants have not really produced very well. We have um, flowers from this is black bean. You can see the purple black bean flower, similar to the yellow um, peanut flower, except not yellow, just purple. Um, and these have been producing beans, and I have been harvesting the beans off of these plants as they dry. Is a green one. So, and this one is drying. You know, this plant here. We still have a little baby watermelon. Really not a lot of sun on the plant to make the melon grow though, so it's just a miniature watermelon and staying miniature. We've got the cantaloupe melon next to that. I had six cantaloupe melon plants here and they didn't produce any cantaloupes. This one here growing. We'll see if there'll be sufficient sun. You can see the size of it now is a couple of fingers thick. We'll see if we get a cantaloupe out of that. We can, we can be hopeful. Tomato plants, this is where the sun starts to break through a little bit, especially morning to midday. Late day, the neighbor's yard is so full of trees it doesn't get sun, but morning to midday we start getting sun on this half, of the back half. And we're getting tomatoes now. They're starting to uh, change color and look like real tomatoes. So the sufficient sun starting from here. We had spinach mustard grow here, that's all bolted in the process of harvesting. 
the spinach mustard plants in this garden bed too. This is the idea of the lettuce plant in the low sun garden. You can see this nothing much more than the size of my hand and tiny and scrawny. It's even one of the oldest lettuce plants and they never went anywhere. So you need a lot of sun for lettuce. This is a the um, Grand Rapids lettuce. Again, it stayed miniature and even the stalk is very short. Only about uh, a little over knee height. So stunted because of lack of sun. The peppers. I'm getting good peppers here. You can see the size of this pepper. It's a um, fairly good size. Uh, they did okay, even with low sun. So peppers seem to be the first one, in, in the, well, the second one, tomatoes and peppers, seem to do okay in this back part of the garden. The um, flowers, this is purely decorative flowers, uh, try, um, they do well in the shade, and they're doing well. They, they love the shade, and behind them I have a whole bunch of coleus growing, miniature coleus. Right now, they'll grow bigger, but they're just from seed. And you can see they're making their middle center color on their leaves just now. They've only been in a week. And then the back quarter, the last little bit, gets a lot of sun. Especially morning through just past noon. Maybe five hours of sun. And you can see the difference when the plants get five hours of sun compared to almost none. They grow very dense and thick and I'm getting hundreds and hundreds of cherry tomatoes all in and thick in these tomato plants. I'll have hundreds this season. Uh, so there is the tomato patch, cherry tomato patch in the sunny last third or so, 25% to 33% of that first garden really gets sun and they did well. Plus this part of the garden has been dug in deep, three feet deep in a deep bed method. Whereas that front part that looks sad and kind of scraggly has not been dug deep and gets very little sun. Not good for vegetable growth. So live and learn. The miniature black bean garden has done very well. It's producing lots of beans some that just need picking now as I'm walking by, so I'm picking some. But this one has already given me two cups of beans or so, this patch so far, and there's at least two more cups left in the number of beans I still have to pick. So you open up the pods and there's all black beans in there. Finally, on the last bit of this garden, in the back section where the sun still hits, we have Nice cabbage, a row of cabbage there. And more sweet peppers. These bell peppers, I've got plants growing. This is, this plant is chest high. But I'm still waiting on the peppers. I've got flowers, but no peppers yet. So patiently waiting on that. The peas completely died out. I'm trying them again in the sunny terrace garden. These peas were a bad location. And these are the green beans, the snap beans. And they've been flowering. And you can see here's the yellowish white flower on the beans. Uh, very similar looking to the flower on the peanuts and on the black beans. And let's see, we've got flowering plants here. But that's it for the garden one area.